So good morning, it's 10 o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. So it's time for the Zoom committee to make sure they've got the recording going. Just to double check. Okay, we've got a lot to do today. I'm Janelle Vortes, your president. So one, welcome to a wonderful transition of weather. It feels more like winter with all the rain than all that hot weather we got a few years ago. It's such a pleasant change. We have a short presentation. Okay, we'll postpone. <laughs> we'll postpone the presentation that um, Rhonda was going to do until her guest arrives. Rhonda, do we have any new members or guests today? We do not. So if somebody is fairly new, please raise your hand and everybody look around because if you actually joined the guild in the last couple months, you've got a gal on the back. Dolores. Yeah. Dolores, everybody say Dolores. She was here. Okay, thank you. And that was a suggestion from our incoming president. So we'll go through that in a few minutes. So let's see. We have a busy meeting plan with a busier rest of November and then just one meeting left in December of this year. So let's look at the agenda for today and some reminders. Um, today we're going to uh, just a reminder, all of our meeting minutes, except for speaker presentations, are recorded, and they're on the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild website under blog, in case you missed one. We will do show and tell first, so we can decorate the room. Does everybody like that idea? Get it really pretty first. Then we'll move on to our election of officers. And I'm really happy about our, our uh, officers. And our rainy day challenge is going to be postponed until the next meeting. Debbie Ferris Cole apparently had a mishap this morning. Um, Jim Jensen reported to me that apparently she fell down a couple of steps. So we'll be checking on her after the meeting is over but we're gonna postpone that because she worked so hard putting it together. I would absolutely hate for her to miss it. Plus I think she has most of the challenge items. <laughs> so we wouldn't be able to see them anyway. So I hope she's well enough to be on Zoom. Then we're gonna have committee reports and more. Just a reminder, if you do need to use the restroom or take a, a slight break, you're welcome to leave, and, but please remember to come back. <laughs> Especially if you leave your purse behind. Actually, whoever's sitting next to someone who gets that, hang out of their purse so they have to come back. Just kidding. Okay, let's decorate the room. Let's line up for show and tell. If you have a show and tell item, line up over here. Linda Hooper and Jim Jensen will be taking pictures and then hanging the quilts. Okay, here's Linda Hooper. Hi. Um, at the beginning of this year in March, we lost a dear member of our family. Um, it was my daughter's new husband's father at 59 years old, unexpectedly. 
Anyways, he had three wonderful sons and they've asked me if I would make three quilts for them. I just finished the first one last night. If anyone's ever made a memorial quilt, they know that it can be challenging because they have a lot of different textures of fabric and things. This one is made mostly of his sweaters. He lived in Wisconsin. So it didn't even need batting. All I did is put a batting on it and it's good to go. <laughs> It's fabulous number. It's just beautiful. I show the back. The back is just a flannel. But it has your quilting. Oh, beautiful job quilting. It all had to be done with uh, the uh, walking foot. There was no way I could free motion over at the, the corners. I tried it and I broke the needle on the first inch. So it's like, okay, a walking foot it is. Yeah. Thank you. Jan Nielsen. This is Rhonda Dennis, Denny's quilt. Good morning, Santa Rosa quilt gilt. Um, this is old. Hi, over there. <laughs> this is old. It's a Jane A. Stipple Dear Jane quilt. It's a portion of a Dear Jane quilt. I made two at the same time. You might remember the black velvet one with bright watercolors and um, that one more traditional for the Civil War era. And then, um, yeah, it's super bejeweled and uh, it, uh, it has a backstory that you probably heard it before and that's okay. So thank you so much. Thank you, Rhonda. And for any of you in the room, please go over and check it out. It is beautiful. She's got all kinds of little teeny tiny pearl beads and lots of fancy items. Jan Nielsen. Ooh, mystery quilt. This is my mystery quilt. <laughs> It's all done with grunge. I call it confetti. This is just beautiful. I recognize some of this grunge, I think, from our opportunity quilt. And this one, um, Joni. Joni just finished quilting this one for me. This is a this is a Jenny Dome pattern that I just liked because I love the Southwest. What an adorable quilt! Okay, Georgie Ann. Hi, and this is my mystery quilt, and I made it with um, two and a half inch squares. So it fits on a twin bed. Oh, and I made it using all the two straps. Very nice. Okay, Hartman. Hi, this is a, a teacup quilt, just a wall hanging. I like all the pattern prints. It's for me. And Joni Bellinghausen quilted both of these for me. And this is uh, the um, a small version of what the class that Ann Nolan taught via Zoom. So that'll be a baby quilt for family. Okay, I recognize that one. Hey, Cheryl Dudley. Okay, hi there. Um, I made this for my sister's 75th birthday. I started collecting fabrics. For those who've been in the guild, they remember Gail Alton. When we were up at Tahoe, we, we collect sunflower fabrics and so. Um. 
so I said I'd make it for her 75th birthday. Unfortunately, she passed away at 74, so I never got to give it to her, but and I just couldn't bring it myself to finish it, but I finally finished it at the first retreat I've been at since 2008, 19. So I got all my old ones open anyway. So I'm gonna send it to her daughter. So anyway, but Gail, Gail made hers a lot way before me and already had it when she, before she passed away. Okay, Sharon Owen. Oh, another mystery quilt. I wish I would have come uh, first <laughs> because this isn't as pretty as some of them. This was all my scraps from a, another quilt that I made. Wow. That's a three and a half. Wow. Just waiting for uh, some relative to like this one and then I'll have it quilted. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. It's beautiful. I love the choice of colors, too. Oh, Pam Brown. It's never too late for Halloween. Oh. <laughs> this is a, a hall called Halloween Houses. Some of you recognize the pattern. I took a class at um, Quilted Angel. Uh, not a class I would recommend, but um, <laughs> just an FYI. <laughs> I love it, and I've, I've uh, extended Halloween for a whole week. My spinning group is coming tomorrow, and I have all my Halloween quilts hanging up. <laughs> so, 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 thank you. Yeah. It's adorable. Thank you all. Look how nice our wall is looking. Okay, we have a special guest today. Rhonda, would you like to come down here and? Introduce your guest. Thank you so much. So this is my new friend, a woman I completely admire. She's a dynamo like we are. She, if you want somebody to get something done, this girl can do it. Monique. Um, so Monique is going to uh, start this by reading a letter and then I'm gonna do a and A. And then if there are any questions, she would be happy to answer them. And I'm gonna read some positive affirmations also. So Monique, can I, do I hold this? Okay. Well, thank you all for having me today. It's my pleasure to be here and thank you so much for having me. Um, so I wrote this letter to all of you just to really show my gratitude for all that you guys are doing to support our health centers and our patients. So. Um, so on behalf of Santa Rosa Community Health's Lombardi Baby Closet Team, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude, muchísimas gracias, to all of you for your ongoing support, coordination, donations, and big hearts. The as items have been take, received with immense joy by our team and bring us determination to provide on a take-what-you-need basis for our tiniest patients and their families. We have been able to supply expecting and new mothers at moment's notice with more than they can imagine for their beautiful new babies. It is under ongoing efforts from myself and CPSP perinatal health educator lead Monica Madrigal to make the baby closet highly navigable and be a space we are proud to promote. At this time, we have maintained a focus to provide to OB patients in their second and third trimester, as well as families in high need of support for their babies. We must ebb and flow with all new regulations around COVID and many shifts in schedules, but we will not falter in support of our patient families. These items are truly special, knowing many come in homemade from all of you or are passed on from babies in your families. It is so amazing to be able to share with patients because it is all done with them in mind. We must care for our new generation and the people raising them. 
And what an amazing feeling it is to know there's a whole community behind us that want to serve our patient families. It is with many thanks to you that we can make sure patient families will always have a place to turn to when they need anything to bring comfort to their child, whether it be a fresh set of clothes, a warm blanket, a stuffy friend that they can hold on through their childhood. We are always trying to wrap our minds around the deep level of care that you show through your support and you all serve as a backbone to this project. We know that we have people who believe in our vision and serve our amazing and diverse community at Santa Rosa Community Health, and that's more than we could ever ask for. And we will continue to build up as COVID scales down, and we thank you for your support. So, Monique, how do these people find out that there is a service like this? So we have many patients and we serve a whole range of patients, either low income, undocumented, those going through some of the hardest challenges in their lives. And we connect them through our OB program. So any mother is coming in, um, they meet with our OB team and they kind of learn about different services we have in the community. And then we're also able to just say, it's okay if like you are worrying about anything, if you don't know how you're gonna start to afford clothes for your baby or start to afford diapers or don't know where these things are gonna come from, we have your back. And okay, <laughs> sorry. And so we just, as soon as they come in and they identify a need, we're able to say, we have it. Don't worry, you're in the right place and we will take care of you. Excellent. So, um, do they get, do the moms get to go in the closet or is it just the medical professionals? So it depends on how the visit goes. Sometimes we prepare things in advance for patients. We set aside a certain amount of things through clothes ranges and, or diaper sizes and have it ready for them if they want to just come pick it up in their busy schedules or they can come and um, uh, work with one of our medical assistants or someone from our CPSP team to kind of identify different items they might want but it's all on a take what you need basis and there is no limits to what we give up. And um, how do we know that they love this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's very clear to us when we get to serve patients, they, it's like taking a huge burden off of them. Not only are they going through hard times, but um, it's always a huge sense of relief for them to know that they don't have to go anywhere else, that they are already being served for their medical care, and this is just an extension of that. And um, where do the diapers come from? Um, so currently we're actually working with, with Empire Food Bank to provide diapers. Um, we do a reporting process where we talk about how many patient families that we serve each month and about how many sizes, all the way from newborn diapers, all the way through toddler sizes. Yes. Um, so before I read these things, does anybody have any questions? Are they homeless? Are they homeless? Homeless. Um, so most of the patients at a specific campus that the baby closet is at are Lombardi campus. Um, we don't serve homeless folks that often there, but they could be. But um, with the baby closet, we also support support our new beginnings clinic. So any mothers that have had any substance abuse issues in the past and want to make sure that they are always on the right track to make sure they change their lives for their children. We also support them and share out any of our items too. And those patients um, face more homelessness than our regularly served patients. And um, in conjunction with my artist girlfriend, um, she allowed me to use some of her artwork and we made these postcards to be uplifting, um, uh, positive affirmations. And so I'm just gonna really quickly read these and I hope that they will lift you as well. Um, so, think happy thoughts. Today, I will not worry. Keep going, keep growing, be unstoppable. 
Let whatever you do today be enough. She made broken look beautiful and strong look invincible. She walked with the universe on her shoulders and made it look like a pair of wings. Come on. <laughs> the greater the storm, the brighter your rainbow. She was one of the rare ones, so effortlessly herself and the world loved her for it. So I think these things are really uplifting. Yeah. So my goal through all of you and a couple of other um, organizations I have in my back pocket, make okay. these beautiful things. And these are the things that go into the well baby bags. Monique, will you hold up the well baby bag? So we have all these components and um, Monica can go into the closet at any point and find all of these items to stick in the bags. And, oh, cheapers, I'm so sorry, you poor Zoomers, you really get the short end of the stick. So um, inside these bags, um, baby gets a hat. Now Sharon has donated today 57 hats, and I'm rolling away. <laughs> um, hats, oh, this is, have you ever seen a little kitty that I'm crazy in love with? Comes with a little dolly blankie. And um, this is like baby's first toy. But of course, there are a multitude of these. And if they have siblings, the siblings get them too. Um, of course, you all know about the burping bibs. Burping bibs. And oh my gosh, look at these gorgeous baby quilts. 27. Marlene, are you here today? Where are you? Girlfriend, they are gorgeous. Um, oh, just an example of a receiving blanket. Super simple. No big deal. Will you put this up, please? And everybody gets them. Backing up again. Um, I have hat makers in the house. Sharon Fry, Janice Yule, uh, Jan Andrews not here today. And then there's me. <laughs> Look at this. I'm horrible at this time. It, it's the same, it's the same pattern. And I don't know what I'm doing, obviously. <laughs> so that's why I call on my, my, my knitters. So, um, so everybody gets one of these fantastic uplifting, um, all this stuff. And Monique does all the hard work. I just collect it and itemize it. And she comes and picks it up and she stores it and she does the inventory. She does an inventory after my inventory, which is a good idea. Anyway, Zoomers, thank you so much for putting up with me. Um, <laughs> and do you have anything else you want to say? In the microphone. I just really want to say thank you again. This has been such a great collaborative project and it's really honestly made my work change. And I feel like I have new appreciation for how communities can really organize on behalf of people who are struggling and really the hearts that you guys have to give to complete strangers is amazing and beyond me. And I could not imagine what caused me to be so lucky to have all of you behind us. It is really so special to us. And it's a huge service when someone is in that moment worrying and then they have to go no farther at the moment's notice. We can always serve patients. And that is something really special that we really couldn't have done with all of you. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rhonda, for bringing Monique to us. And she wants to take a picture, I believe. But thank you so much for all the work you do. And that's Santa Rosa Community Health. OK. We have a very important election today for our 2022 officers. I would like. Um, to introduce each of you to our officers. And our officers were approved by the board unanimously 
So I think um, we've got a great slate. So, so for president, we have Diana Conning, come on up. Vice President, Candy Delgado. Secretary, Lynette Whitman. Treasurer, Janet Tonkin. Program Chair, Elaine Ramirez. Program Chair-elect, Trina Jansen. Parliamentarian, Sharon Fry. And we have six members at large. Jeannie Parent, Linda Hooper, Kay Hartman, Carol Belke, Joy Wakefield, and Jan Andrews. And Jan is in Iceland, so she's not able to make it. So if you guys can all kind of squeeze in so people at home can see you on Zoom, you can wave to everybody. As soon as Joy gets up here, you guys have to squeeze in more. Look at the, the camera there. I should see the computer. We all in? Jim's taking a few pictures. Thank you. I would like to call for a motion. Jim Jensen? Jim Jensen said he uh, would like to make a motion that all of our wonderful candidates get elected. So, so for you in Zoom and for us here, all of you who are in favor of electing these officers for the term of 2020, please wave your hand. Please keep your hands up so we can get a, an idea of how many. Please keep waving your hand because we want to make sure that we can see all of you. Okay, thank you. All those not in favor of voting in our slate of officers for 2022, please raise your hand. <laughs> Elaine Ramirez is checking the Zoom people. Anything? No, there's no no nays. No nays. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, people here and our Zoomers. And Jim already took the photo. That's great. Let's move on to committee reports. Carol Belke, since you're right here, why don't you give your report? regarding the budget. Thank you. Good morning. Um, probably have bored you all to death with the budget coming out, making sure everybody got a chance to look at it. Did everybody get a chance to look at it? Yes? Were there any questions? I, I, I submit this budget <laughs> for approval. Um, we are very, our committee members and chairs are very conscious of their budget, so they're, we rarely go over, and so I'm thinking we're good. If there's, um, do I need a motion? No, well, because we vote in December. Okay, well then, if you have any questions between now and December, you know where I'm at. Thank you. Were there any questions from the Zoomers? None. Okay. The vote will take place at our December 2nd meeting. We always have to send the budget, the proposed budget out, then we have to make a formal announcement at a meeting, and then the following meeting or two meetings later, we do the vote. Oh. Lost and found. Who do these belong to? I believe they were at the table in the back. Someone set them down. Their sunglasses, I think they're prescription. Of course, I can't tell because I've got prescription glasses on. So, and then don't forget to turn your phones off. Okay, let's do committee reports. Um, 
we were going to do the rainy day challenge, like I mentioned, but Debbie Ferris Cole took a tumble. So we'll probably postpone that maybe till the December meeting. We'll see how it goes. Okay, block of the month, Carol Lemoyne, Joni Bellinghausen. You have drawings for May, June, July, and August. Did everybody who had blocks to turn in get them to Carol today or Joni? You guys can stand right there if you want. As long as you can look in there and see yourself. You know, people. Hi. <laughs> Uh -oh. Wait a we're not ready. Go on to another committee while we chitter chatter very quietly. Um, we have a boutique today. Betty's yeah. back there talking. We have a boutique today. Do you want to say anything? Yeah. She does want to say something. After that, we'll have a community quilts report, but I haven't seen more of Vera. But, yeah, but maybe someone from her team has something to say. Yeah. Betty's going to come up so that all of you at home can see us. It's been a long time since I've done this. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, uh, I do have all the threads and the thread catchers. My ear. Okay. I, if anybody wants a special order or color of thread, I would like to find out about it because I do need to place another order. And uh, I'm out of the good old standbys, tapestry token kids. I order six and they're gone. <clears throat> so anyway, if you want a certain color, please let me know before I place an order. Because if I order, it's no longer wholesale. I have to pay a little more for the threads, but it's still better than we can get anywhere else. And um, the... I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, doesn't matter. Just let me know if you want some more threads. Thank you, Betty. Okay, I don't think we have anyone that's going to speak about community quilts, but I want to say a big thank you to everybody who has been turning quilts in. We even got a whole bunch today that came in. Oh, Marble Pitter is doing community quilts. Come on up. And so a rose. You can spread everything out here. Just make sure they can see you there. Okay, I have a message from you from Community Quilts. Um, Community Quilts wants to thank you for all the quilts that you have done. And uh, right now we're going to focus on delivering quilts on November and December. And uh, we, we delivered our first quilts to the Kaiser and I see you this week. And we're still collecting tops. So if you have any, you can contact Laura Barrett, Janet Tonkin, Margo Pitter, and arrange for drop off. And at this time, the quotes that we need the most are the 40 by 60 for the kids and adults. And once again, I want to thank you all for your generosity. Okay, this one is quote number 24, and um, it is going to go to Diana Cotty. No, you finished this one. Diana finished this one. So we're done. Thank you all. This one is the one that Diana's getting. And, um, and that'll be the last row to go on there. And if anybody has a solo row they want to turn in, they can give it to me. Thank you. Fifi's Fabric Follies. Somebody was looking for that. What's it? No, we're done. Oh, <laughs> she's done. <laughs> We're ready now. <laughs> or now they're ready. Okay, come on up. Okay, sorry. They got a lot of ones turned right. in today. This is a little complicated. We're doing Zoom and we're doing whatever. Oh. All right. 
So for May, we have the dress for success. And Joni's going to show you some of them while I tell you who participated. And if you do not hear their voice, if you do not hear your name, why do I have this? Yeah, you might not hear it. You might not hear it. Um, if, I, if, if you do not hear your name, well, then tell me because I lost it. Hopefully, I did not. So the participants of the Dress for Success for the month of May is Alana, Carla, Francis Evans, Janet, Sharon, Georgian, Carol, and Joni. So we had a total of 18. That's good enough. Let's draw. <laughs> Let's <laughs> <mix them. laughs> I mean, I know you're not bad. <laughs> Uh, okay. Can you respond here, Carol, without the microphone? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so somebody here, Nancy, pick out two people. And those will be the winners. Oh, no way. I think I got just two. Okay. That's what we want. So the winners are Janet Tonkin. And Alana. Our next drawing is for the month of June, which was Father's Day. And so we had bow ties. So it was an easy peasy Father's Day bow tie. Hey, Joe. Uh, uh, the, your last two winners were on June. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so for June, we had 26. These are the bow ties. And uh, the participants were Janet, Tonkin, Francis Evans, Early, Alana, Kay, Georgian, Carol, uh, Carla, and Joni. So we'll We'll pick two winners. No, you're not. I'll look. Okay. You know what? You weren't on a couple of them, and I was wondering about that. Okay. I don't know. Carol Lemonier? Yeah. <laughs> well, I made a lot. And Joni. Hey! Bow tie blocks. I think it's a fix. I I know. Know. <laughs> All right. For July, we had the vacation shirts. And um these were so, oh, these were so cute. I really like making these. And I added my, mine that I made, I added uh, buttons. So if you are quilting them, and um, I don't really have a neck problem, I'm just trying to be. Um, you will allow. <laughs> right. um, so, but I, so I put buttons on them, but I put them very loosely in case you want to get them off to quilt it and then put it back on. Anyway, Sharon Fry, Janet, Carla, Alana, Georgian, and Carol. The one country one. Okay, uh -huh. right. <laughs> so we had 18, so we will pick two. Take two. The winners are, <laughs> well, one of the winners is me again, but I made 11 of them. And then Janet Tonkin. <laughs> and then finally, we have August. And not a lot of people participated in this one. I don't know why. It was bikinis. I think they kept them for themselves. I know. I think so, too. Um, so we had Francis Evans, who made two. Janet made two. I made 11. And Joni made one. <laughs> So we had 16. How many winners should we have? Just one or two? One. One? one? Yeah. 16 of them? Unless it's 16 Carol. of them? 
Is that how many? I think two. Two? Well, what do you think? Two? All right. Eight. Okay. Okay. All right. Two. So. Let's see this one. They're all just adorable. I know. Sorry. Okay. The winner is Francis Evans. Good. And, sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, but now, if you want to win, you are going to do two. She did. She won the second one. Oh, okay. If um, if you want to win, you got to make a lot. It's called odds. <laughs> if, if you've ever been to Las Vegas, it's called odds. So, for October, well, I want to show it again. This is the October one. It's really, really cute. I have one for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have your name on it? Uh, I don't know. Make sure you have your name on it, or else I, I won't know. Um, so, make a lot. I haven't had a lot of response on this one. It's really, really cute. And then for November, we are making um, the uh, Thanksgiving apron. Hold it down a little bit further and you won't have to wear it. I mean, you can just wear that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it fits. <laughs> okay. Maybe a little short. So, so those are our blocks for um, October and November. And then we will have a block for December. And um, it's, coming too. yeah, because December is coming too. Yeah. So thank you very much for participating. And uh, I'll be back. Well, we, miss, we miss September, but we are, we miss September, but we are making it up and I have the pattern for it. So we will have a September one. I have a question. I didn't understand this uh, event. And so the winner gets half of the blocks. Yeah. For right. How it works? Yeah. So you make for every block that you make, you get a, a drawing. Here. Here. And then um, come over here and explain. Oh. Here. Okay. <laughs> for every block that you make. <laughs> for every block that you make, you get a, a ticket. And then, you know, it depends on how many we have. If we only have eight, there'll only be one winner. Normally we have around 16 to 20, and then we'll have two winners. If we have even more than that, then we'll have more than winners. And it's at the end of what kind of? Well, spring? you know, before COVID, we would have it every month. Oh. But because of COVID, it, they were being mailed to me or given to me somehow. And now we're kind of half COVID, half not. So we'll have the, the next drawing probably in January. At some point, with the permission of the president. Thank you. Thank you. So for September, November, December, and October, we'll have a drawing sometime in January. So just keep making those blocks. And if anybody's interested in taking over the block of the month program, we can use committee chairs. Okay, let's move on. Um, food bank. Jen Nielsen, did you want to say something about the food bank? We always collect. Yeah, I, um, I sent out an uh, email, I think it was yesterday or the day before, letting you know that we will be having, uh, we won't have our barrel this year, but we will have uh, bins to collect the food that the food bank requests. And there is an email saying which items they need. And remember, no glass, no perishables, no homemade items. But it's all on their list. I'll send it out again. And um, if you'd like to give a check, we also will have an envelope for that at our next two meetings, November 18th and December 5th, is it? 5th? Anyway, our December meeting. And uh, then we will personally deliver it to the food bank. Any questions? No? Okay. I believe it's December 2nd. Okay. 
Bert, Bertolu. Hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Is it best to stand here? It's best to stand right there. They can see. You can see yourself. And see. Oops. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barbara Portaloo, and I'm here on behalf of the Placement Project for Council on Aging's Meals on Wheels. And I want to tell you that it's been a banner year. We have, I just counted 530 placemats last time. And I think there's about 20 on the back table right now. If you have any at home, our Zoomers, uh, contact me and I will come and pick them up or you can bring them to my home. We'll make some kind of arrangements to get them. I'd like to turn them in by the 1st of December. Um, maybe, yeah, the 1st of December. I haven't talked with Jennifer yet, but anyway, I wanna really thank everybody for the effort and the enthusiasm that they've shown with this project. Um, I also would like to, call out one person who did an outstanding job. When we got back from COVID, I came in and I was greeted with over a hundred placemats by one of our members. Her name is Marple Pitter. Oh. I don't usually call it. Some of you have turned in 50 of them, but a hundred <laughs> plus. Um, deserve some special recognition. Anyway, thank you very much. And I'd also like to thank Sharon Fry for her library and more day that she continued throughout this COVID time. And I think it really helped our program. And it was a way for us to communicate as far as getting the kits out, getting ones in, getting batting. It really helped. Thank you, Sharon, very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Not only did she exceed her goal, but uh, she's going to make a lot of people happy. Elaine Ramirez, do you want to do programs and workshops? I do. I do. I do. She's been behind the scenes a whole lot. Not sure, not sure if I need this, but I don't know if you guys had a chance to check out the tribal that I put together. And these are the first three workshops for 2022. We have Sherry Sapaldi, Morale doing Double Friendship Knot, and I am so happy to report we already have 16 people signed up for it. Yes. <laughs> so there's four more spots if you'd like to sign up for it. I'm here today to get checks, or you can always mail me a check. The next one is um, a Baltimore album quilt, and uh, this will be an entirely hand workshop. So if you're into hand work, uh, there's that, and then the the one in March is with Linda Sullivan, and it's kind of a fun, wonky thing. And she's going to give a lecture for us called "Got Color," and lead a free form class. All of these workshops and lectures will be on Zoom. Um, all of the workshops are two, three hour workshops, and they are all open right now for you to sign up. So you can either email me, come back and see me, give me a check. And I want to point out, thank you, Linda Hooper. There is a fabulous website that I put together that Linda has worked out a way to link it to our Santa Rosa Quilt Guild website. If you go there, you'll see under programs and workshop, there's a red link. If you click on it, so many of these teachers have even recorded videos for us because a lot of people said, I, you know, I don't know. Once I see the teacher, I wish I'd signed up. Well, you can see the teachers now. You're telling about their classes. Go ahead, check it out. A lot of fun. And then the last, should I talk about the Zoom? Yeah. Now, okay. Anybody may have seen me kind of running back and forth there doing Zoom. We with the Zoom committee would love some help. Um, you don't really need to have a lot of technology. We've got three positions available. One of them is literally just picking up this hotspot from a library. All you need is a library card. That just saves us one step. So anybody that's willing to do that is great. Um, sometimes we have roving co-hosts, which we had at the Silicon, which is just kind of walking around and holding a mic up to somebody. 
talk to people on Zoom. And the third position does require a little bit of technology, which is just bringing your laptop, hooking it up to the Wi Fi here, and setting it up. So that's easy. We'd love your help. You can contact either Lane Tucker or myself. That'd be great. Thanks. Thank you, Elaine Ramirez, for doing a super job. Oh, good. And they do need help. So please get in touch with them. Francis Evans is here for Opportunity Quilt. Good morning, good afternoon, members. Just a reminder, our quilt is back there. You need to come and take a look at it. It's really beautiful up close. Um, uh, the drawing is in April, so that gives us about five months to continue to sell tickets. We had two ladies passing by walking their dog. They are members and uh, they came to get some tickets. So if you know anyone, it is also, you can uh, show someone on your phone what the quilt looks like. So uh, we still have tickets, don't forget. Uh, you can pick up your tickets and then the next time we meet, you can bring your stubs and your money or check. Uh, to us to put it into the bin. The, I believe we only have one meeting in December, one meeting. So we have one more meeting this month, one in December. And before you know it, we're into the new year. So don't be left behind. It's a beautiful quilt. And just also, I want to say thank you to all of you who have purchased tickets and support the Guild. That's just another way that we can help here. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. And the drawing will be in April of 2022. Okay, Jan Andrews could not be here because she's off playing in Iceland with all of the icicles. Anyway, um, she wanted me to remind you that it's the time to start paying your dues. They have not been raised, they're $35 a year that's less than three dollars a month pretty good bargain for all we get for it but she says one might wonder why it's important to support the santa rosa quilt guild if they're not attending meetings in person she says but it is important our dues pay for the rent at the vets building the luther burbank art and garden center our storage facility the zoom account and much much more and given the absence of other income generators like the silent auction, we have a, a small one today, and the boutique, which isn't in full swing quite yet, especially since they haven't had um, the quilt show in June for the last two years. We usually sell a lot of things from the boutique there. And a lot of our donations have stopped or been um, diminished a lot in the last couple of years. But she says, it's best to have your dues paid up by the first meeting in January because then she can get the roster together. So you can make a check. Even today, they got to SRKG. You can mail one to Jan Andrews. If you have cash, we'll take cash at a meeting, but do not mail it through the mail. And we don't have change, so it would have to be in cash. Anyway. Um, and the, we have, some of you may not know this, but the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild has its own post office box, and it's listed on our newsletter, I believe, right, Jim? Uh, it's box 9251 Santa Rosa 95405, but if you look in the newsletter, you'll see the address where you can send it. Brenda, did you want to mention something? If there are any other committee chairs that would like to report on something, please line up. Brenda, come on up. Hi, I'm Brenda Cobrin. I'm running the Days for Girls team in Santa Rosa. Thank you to those of you that have um, made things for Days for Girls. Just as a reminder, it's a project where we make reusable washable menstrual kits for girls 
around the world, mostly in developing countries where they don't have access to menstrual supplies and it helps girls stay in school, uh, go to work. It's super, super important. And we just sent, I sent off five huge boxes to a Utah collection center a couple of weeks ago that are going to Jordan. Um, there's, there are huge refugee camps. They're like cities, really. There's like two, 300,000 people in each of these camps. And people have actually, these, some of these refugee camps have been open for 20 or 30 years. There are like generations growing up in them. People from Palestine, Syria, and all over that have been displaced. And these kinds of menstrual kits are hugely important to them to, you know, just be able to live a normal life for girls and young women. So anyway, thank you so much for all of you that have participated. And um, I want you to know that, you know, I won't be at every meeting, but Rhonda Denny has um, offered to be a collection person when I'm not here. If you work on components, she will collect them for me and make sure that they get to me. Um, so there are four sewn components. There's a drawstring bag that holds everything. And then there's um, something that looks like this. Um, that's, we call this the shield, and it ends up getting a snap on it, which gets installed later, and that kind of snaps around the underwear. And then, I don't have all the components here today, but there's also a 100% uh, uh, cotton flannel, what we call liner, that gets folded up, and it gets put in here, and that's actually the pad. And then, um, this is what we call the carry pouch. Um, it has a waterproof fabric in there. And that's for carrying dirties. Um, so anyway, there's all these different components um, people are sewing at home, and then we assemble them into kits um, later on. So anyway, I have some supplies today, not a lot, because I didn't really have time to put them together. But if you'd like to work on the project, let me know. I can make sure that I get you the supplies for it and the instructions. And also, I have videos for how to do each of the components and that really helps also too, because it's very specific. They are, they're very specific about how they want them done. They want every component to be done precisely because they want every girl to get a kit that's, that's really well made and that will last for three to five years. So anyway, thank you all. Brenda, I need to talk to you. I didn't know they had to be top stitched. Oh, yeah, I was just, <laughs> I just noticed it. Okay, Sharon Fry, our librarian. Yay. Hello. We have a brand new issue of Quilt Folk Magazine. It's issue number 20. They only have four that come out every year and they are just absolutely beautifully photographed and so well written. This one is about Idaho. After you read it, then you'll know why our member Janice Rogers moved away. This date is really, really cool. It has lots of great things for quilters. One article in particular that you're going to enjoy is about a woman who is a triathlete. She trains intensively several days a week for those bike rides, swims, and runs. And on her off day, she quilts. The woman is 75 years old. <laughs> Lots of good articles here. Jim Jensen has introduced us to Sam Gordon. Jim has been sending us the um, emails that I've passed out to you. Um, Sam, Sam had a number of concussions that caused him to lose speech and he's gone through depression, all sorts of problems. He's lost his occupation, but he has fought back. He is quilting, he's writing. This book is just so darn wonderful. It's called The Swinging Barn Door. The quilt that is on the cover reminds me of a Grandma Moses 
painting. In every single one of the characters, including the barn door, is shown blown up in the book along with a story about that character and how they all interrelate. And it, it's something that you could probably read to your kids and your grandkids. It, it's, just, it's just terrific. Looking at the close-up pictures, you're going to say, oh gosh, why do I worry so much about my piecing and getting my corners to fit? And you try so darn hard to get those zigzag stitches to be just right when you're applicating. Well, now I'm going to try harder to make my zigzag stitches um, more unique because they're just so darn charming in this book. We have reserve tickets on the front of the book. If you'll add your name to it, we'll try to get it to you at a subsequent meeting. And Jackie Pitts, if you're out there in Zoom land, I've put your name on this book because you're gonna love it. When Joy and I were at the storage unit, we collected a bunch of the Christmas and holiday books. We've got them out on the library table. Um, come back in case you need some ideas on um, things to be making for the holidays. I brought this up with me as a reminder. Uh, we do have a silent auction going on in the back of the room. Um, instead of putting tickets on to um, bid on items, this time we're going to just have you help yourself to whatever you would like. If you don't have enough hands, we'll help you take them to your car. If you get some extra money in the bottom of your uh, purse or your pocket and would like to add to the silent auction jar, that will be put towards more um, periodicals and books for the library. Uh, Joy and I will be going over to the storage unit afterwards. If you'd like to come with us to paw through the shelves, you're welcome. Or give one of us um, the titles of books that you would like. If you don't know what you like, I've got the Guild laptop computer back there and we'll help you sort through and find what you need. Also, you can email me in between meetings and I keep lists of what people want so I can pull the books and have them ready for you next time. Um, and the hats that I brought in today, 57. That was my show and tell today. The hats, thanks to all of you, because you have been the ones who have been donating yarn to me to keep me knitting while I'm watching the news and keep the blood pressure down. <laughs> Any questions about library? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Mary Wood, can you come up and tell us about the yarn? She's got a yarn story for you. So we can yarn on. Isn't every story a yarn? I'm sure all of us have friends who knit and crochet and quilt. And when there comes a time that they can no longer have their stashes, many of us have been given the opportunity to bring that stash and find it to be repurposed in the community. I have a dear lady friend who is a prolific knitter as well as a handwork person. Her handwork items have been donated to the Redwood Stitchers. Um, and I took many boxes of projects to Joy and then took them to the Stitchers. I have yarn and this friend had beautiful, beautiful sweater yarns. So there are still some left. Many of you have already done your shopping and gotten some treasures. Um, if you have little projects that you just need a little touch, there's a few odds and ends that she had left over. And then another friend of mine had a friend who was downsizing her yarn and it was more craft yarn. So those nice little hats that Sharon has been making for the closet for Rhonda, it's wonderful yarn for that. It's a utilitarian, all-purpose Afghan-type hat yarn. So there's still some colors left. 
come and shop. If you'd like to make a donation to the jar in the back, that's great. If not, that's great. And there's knitting needles. So come and help yourself. My husband will appreciate it because he wants his shed back. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to say? Anything they want to announce? Well, we do need a few good people for some jobs that are being vacated this year. And our new president, Diana Conning, will be asking for volunteers. Uh, Miss Sunshine, Jan Westerman, has been sending cheer and hugs for many, many years. And she is stepping down at the end of the year. So if you'd like to be Miss Sunshine, let um, let Diana Cotting know. Diana, raise your hand so everybody knows exactly who you are. And there are some other openings also, but I'll let her put a message out on those. So here's what's going to happen the rest of the year. Are you guys ready? November 18th is going to be Broadway Quilts Proprietor, Jerry. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Is it Rose Mergy? Rose Mergy, thank you. Um, it's going to be here and on Zoom, November 18th. She will be our guest speaker at 10 a.m. Our UFO, our Unfinished Objects Challenge results will be with Ellen Dell Wells. So if any of you put money up for UFOs, Make sure you send her the completed pictures. After the speaker meeting, our newly elected board and our outgoing board will meet and Jim Jensen will hand out the updated pink binders. We're going to do that instead of having our Zoom time and renting a room for the joint board meeting. But it'll be after the meeting on the 18th. Uh, let's see. Oh, on November 19th, which normally would be a workshop, we have two separate events. Your Zoom team will host a sew day from 10 a.m. until noon on Friday, November 19th, for anyone who wants to sew at home with others from the Guild. The link will be sent to the Guild on Thursday, November 18th for the 19th sew day. The second option there will be an in-person sew day planned at the Luther Burbank Art and Garden Center from about 9.30 till 2. Space is extremely limited due to our COVID restrictions. And I think we'll only be able to have like 23 registered sewers to be admitted. So if you've got a project you're trying to complete before the holidays, or if you want any help with the mystery quilt, um, Carol Belke will be there sewing along, and if you have any questions, she can help you with that. You'll receive an email on Monday, November 8th, telling you more details about that and who to call to register for that sew day. And we will follow our, COVID, <coughs> our current COVID restrictions with mask wearing and vaccinations required, et cetera. But you'll get more information on that. There is no board meeting on November 25th. It is Thanksgiving. So we all get a break. December 2nd will be our last meeting of the year. And it's our holiday party right here at the Vet Center and live streaming on Zoom. It starts at 10 a.m. Okay, bring your holiday and winter quilts to decorate our meeting walls or, and wear your favorite holiday outfit. I know Jan and I love to dress up for that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you can wear your ugly holiday sweater too, if you'd like. Um, we have a sew a row lottery and we'll vote on the budget. And we'll just have a wonderful time. So a big thank you to the Zoom team, Elaine Ramirez, Elaine Tucker, Linda Hooper for co-hosting, I believe. Um, who else is working on it today? Oh, and Justine Lott is also working today. I don't see her, so I didn't know she was co-hosting. But I want to thank them for making this meeting possible on Zoom. And thank you all for joining us here.
and host to you all. Um, so I need to know how many participants we had. It's about 10, excuse me, 1110. So I will adjourn the meeting. You are welcome. Jan Nielsen. Don't forget to announce that we have a basket on our December 2nd. Oh, our December 2nd. We're going to have drawings and we're going to have lovely baskets. Linda Super Hooper is putting together lots of help from you guys. So thank you for joining us today. Um, meeting adjourned at, adjourned at 11 11. How's that? <laughs> and we will be talking to you soon, but you're welcome to stay and visit for a while. Check out the yarn. Check out what the boutique items that are here. Sign up for classes, definitely. Sign up for classes, pay your dues, and just have a nice afternoon. Thank you all. Thank you for now. Okay, okay. Elaine, um, I've spotlighted you on the phone. Okay, can you hear me now? I'm going to do a tour of the quilts. Yes, we can hear you. Can see okay, it well. Great. Here's the, this is the one that um, I think Linda Hooper did, the memorial quilt. And here is Rhonda's quilt. Can you zoom in closer so we can you see bet. her sparkles? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Here's she's. She, oh, look, wait, look at this. She's done. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Oh, wait, there's a little fan in this one. Oh, my gosh. I have to go, ladies. See you later. Okay, bye. Yeah. yeah. Rhonda really did a lot of work on this. Okay, and here's one of the um, mystery quilts. Um, yeah, There's exactly. someone standing in front of it. Oops, sorry. Oops. There's a, one of the mystery quilts. And <laughs> I'll chat with you again, Trina. And there's another mystery quilt. This was, I think she said she used all scraps on this, didn't she? But this was the two and a half inch blocks instead of the three and a half. Yeah, there's a someone did a three and a half somewhere in yeah, there. Well, that oh, was yeah. the first one. Oh, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I get a better view of it now. Okay, and then here's the cactus one. Beautiful. Great quilting. Yeah. I, did Joni do this one? I think she did. Yeah. There. Am I am I making it? Am I moving too fast? Am I making people sick? No, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very cute. Cute. She did a really cute um edge oh set. No, who, who she said quilt? Well, I can't remember. Joni did. Oh, Joni yeah. did. And then this is one of um that class that Dan Nolan taught that rock and roll with a jelly roll. I like the way. Oh. The little um, cornerstones in there. That was that was cute. Yeah, it's very fun. And then there's the two. Aren't those cute? It's adorable. Oh, she's got a little St. Patrick's one. Oh, Paris. 
Those are really cute. And here's the Halloween one. Yay! Love it. Oh, and here's the three and a half inch. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I have one of those. <laughs> wow. Oops, sorry. It's unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm sharing it with the the people on Zoom. <laughs> wow. This is really, oh, this isn't quilted. This is just piece right now. It hasn't been quilted yeah. yet. Wow. Great and job. here is the opportunity quilt. Yay. I saw that. That was when I was there. And I'll ask Francis if people on Zoom, let me see if I can chat with her. Hey, Francis, no, no, how can people, if they're, because I'm talking to people on Zoom, how can they uh, get some uh, tickets for this? We're not allowed to mail them in the oh. mail and they can't send us money in the mail. So it's either if they're local, they can call me, you know, maybe I can drop some off and they can give me the money. Um, or if they know they somebody going to a meeting, they could yeah, get it. They could say, bring me back, you know, $20 worth. I'll give you the tickets. Then when they're ready, they can just send them back with their friend. Okay, and perfect. We'll just put them in the pot. So, okay. okay. If anybody there would like a ticket, let me know because I can grab some tickets and before I leave. And if you show them your ticket, if they click on this with their phone, yeah. it takes them to a website where they can actually see. Oh, they can the, use that QR code. Thing. Yeah, they can see the quilt. Oh, cool. Okay. okay. We're not authorized to, we're not allowed to send stuff in the mail. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Perfect. And I think my number is on there. Give me my number. And Did you guys all hear Fran Francis Evans' number is on the Quilt Guild uh, roster? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. You. Are you going to be here for a few more minutes? I'm going to come back oh, yeah. and get some tickets. Okay, good. Sorry. And then I am. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, 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 do you guys have any more questions or not? Nope, you did a great job. Thank you. That was really nice. Thank you. It's great. I'm going to sign off because I've got some people asking questions about the workshop. Good. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Sorry. That was great. We had 38 people at one time. Um, well, you know, up, I so. think you need to check names because there were people who came in and then left and then right. Um, I can save a participants list and and yeah. get it, and so it will show everybody that was here, even if they were there for a few minutes. That's great. So. That's great. Thank you, Elaine. Yeah. That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you for your help, Justine. Ain't no problem. I, I really appreciate how many people came in this time with their names completed. Yeah, um, it great. really, really helped a lot. So yes. thank you. Good. Thanks. And I will be around in December for the um, the counts and everything that goes on. And I will be okay. around next meeting also. OK, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Well, happy quilting, everyone. And um, we'll see you not only the 18th, but we'll do a Zoom on the 19th for a so day. Great. Because there's some in, some will go in person, but we're not going to Zoom the in person. That's no. just too crazy with the noise of machines. And yeah. it's just chaotic. It's easier to do just the Zoom and share within ourselves. That's so much we just nicer. have two, two group sewings. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Oh, I have to turn the recording off.